Hello and Happy New Year to my fellow Americans, I've always wanted to say that, and to my fellow Brits and people around the world, and cats apparently. This is the first video of the new year and it's the first time that I've entered a new year being a citizen of more than one country. In case you missed my December special, which I will link to at the end of this video, I am now a citizen of the United States of America. And it got me thinking, how does that really change my life, except for the fact that I'll now cry at the end of the film Independence Day? Well, it turns out that it actually changes my life in several big ways. During the last 14 years in which I resided here legally as a lawful permanent resident, I was for the most part able to live my life quite freely. However, there were some restrictions. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how those restrictions no longer apply to my life since becoming a United States citizen. Now, if you're watching this and you don't have a clue who I am, but you like the cut of my jib and think, ooh, maybe I should subscribe, do that now. Number one, and this should fill you with absolute dread, I can now run for political office. Let me clarify that, I can run for most political offices, including senator, although there is the caveat with that, that I have to have been a citizen for nine years. So you're gonna have to wait till the 2030s until you can vote for me. But I can also run for governor of Illinois, and there are no terms on how long I have to have been a citizen for for that. That does vary by state, but Illinois' laws are thus, so I could run today. I should point out, I have no ambition to run for office. I'd rather run away from office and that's probably what I'll do and that's definitely true of the presidency because that's one of the rare jobs in which you not only have to be a US citizen but you have to be a US born citizen so the only way I'm going to achieve it is by being cast in Independence Day 3 which frankly is a dream. Actually, this one might scare you more. I can now legally work for the CIA. I, I could be doing intelligence missions in, well, Britain or just overseas. Because by law, the CIA can't employ non-US citizens. You don't have to have been born here. You just have to have US citizenship. And this is actually true of most federal government jobs. Right? I actually did a search online for jobs for which you have to be a US citizen. There's a surprising amount of them. Social Security Administration, the Library of Congress, the FBI. I could, I could be Fox Mulder from the X-Files. People have often said I look like a young David Duchovny and they wouldn't lie to me. So there it is. If I ever get bored of my job as a YouTube sensation, how could I? Then I could take up a position as the head of the FBI. I can now leave the country without restrictions. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but when I was just a permanent lawful resident, I was prohibited by law from leaving the country for more than six months at a time. If I did that, I'd lose my green card and wouldn't be allowed back into the country to live and work. That no longer exists in my life. I can leave the country for however long I want. I could go on that year long trip to Uzbekistan. Because as you've seen, I'm clearly trying to get my citizenship in all of the EU countries. So why not there next? Uruguay in 2035, by which time I'll be a senator in Illinois. I could do all of that and then just return to the United States unimpeded and go about my business as I did prior to leaving. It's a small thing, admittedly. I'm not the sort of person that leaves the country for more than half a year at a time. But it is good to know that I'll be treated the same way at customs as my wife. I included this one because the knowledge that I'm about to impart might be more useful to other people than it is to me. But if I happen to have children that were under the age of 18 who are also permanent lawful residents, they would automatically become US citizens by virtue of the fact that I've just become a US citizen. Come to think of it, my wife is already a US citizen so they probably would have beaten me to the punch. But as you can see, I have a cat, so we're going to have to look up the laws around animals and whether they adopt human citizenship of countries. What do you think, Kafka? Kafka? He doesn't, you don't care. Yes, this is, this is where the real cause for celebration comes in. I can now legally attend jury duty. I'm not that excited about it, to be honest. And in fact, it's not just that I can now legally attend jury duty, I am in fact legally required to do so. And the funny thing about that is I've lived on this planet for over 40 years and I've never ever once attended jury duty in either country. However, I have been summoned on two occasions. 14 years ago, shortly after moving to this country, I received a letter from the British authorities saying that I needed to attend jury duty in my hometown of Grimsby. But because I lived overseas, I was exempt from doing so and we all passed 
carted the night away. A few months later, I received a similar letter from Indiana authorities saying that, Lawrence Brown, you have been chosen to attend jury duty here in the state of Indiana. I don't remember all of the specifics. What I do remember is, I wasn't eligible. I had to write back to them and tell them, ooh, whoever filed my case wasn't very detail-oriented. I was much nicer than that. Because I'm not a US citizen. You need to be a US citizen in order to be considered for jury duty in the United States. So I got a reprieve and still haven't had to do it. Somebody joked the other day, knowing how this goes, that I'll probably receive that notice before I even receive my US passport. And fine. If I have to be a juror on a case and make a decision about that case, you can rest easy with the knowledge that I used to play the game Clue a lot, so I'm good at working things out. It's probably the candlestick in some room or other involving a person who has a colour for a last name. Just realise that I do. Could get awkward. And finally, as a direct consequence of becoming a citizen of the United States of America, I am now eligible to vote. And I'm not just talking about those Twitter polls from my wife's cousin Chad, I'm talking about actual US elections. And I know what you're thinking, ooh, Lawrence, you've always been able to vote in the midterms and local elections, right? Wrong. Even as a lawful permanent resident green card holder who paid his taxes and occasionally ate at White Castle, I was prohibited from voting in almost all US elections. And now that those restrictions don't exist, it is my solemn duty not only to register to vote, but to turn up at a voting machine and vote the heck out of it, if that doesn't make any sense. But you know what I mean. This is especially important ahead of my inevitable run in the 2034 midterms. And so there's just a selection of the things that I can now legally do as a citizen of the United States. And I want to thank you all for the hundreds and thousands of congratulatory messages that came my way during and after my previous video in which I announced my citizenship. I'm Lawrence Brown, you can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that I don't have to. Over at Pondland, which is my merchandise store, t-shirts, t-shirts that I myself designed. Get them while they still last. Either go to my store here on YouTube or click the link in my description for more details. Finally, a big New Year's thanks to my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to support Lost in the Pond and all we do, you can do so at patreon.com slash lostinthepond. Until the next video, goodbye.